Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Good morning, Big Square. It's a good day in the silver world. Um, everything's happening as it has every time they rig the silver market. We have broken out of the 50-day, 100-day, and 200-day moving averages. So we are uh, running like the wind. Ooh, run like the wind. Um, now, keep in mind they can do this again. You see here they let it go a little bit and then slam it down. But they didn't let it go above all the moving averages. Right now what's happening is because these mechanical... <laughs> Day trader type. Nah, they're not day traders. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call them. Technical traders, yeah. So because they move in such a mechanical way, the technical traders are now short. Because it's covered the moving averages, if it closed above the moving averages, which I think is the way it goes today, then they have to start covering their shorts. In the past, the riggers have always bought in to the game. They've always slowed the rise by shorting into the rise. Remember, somebody has to take over these shorts for the technical traders. These people do not deliver silver. That is not part of their game. Their game is making money as it goes over and under some technical moving averages. I mean, it's pretty simple and dumb. But, you know, they're, they're happy with making a penny where the banks make a dollar. That type of thing. Um... So, yeah, we've broken out of the moving averages. Now the question is, are the banks going to short into the rise? The commercials, are they going to short into the rise? So we have a good run up. Um, will they come try to bring it down again? I don't know. Oh, by the way, the, the special I said <laughs> that was going on, you can buy it. I said this is the last time you'll be able to buy Silver Eagles under $30. Those are gone now. So don't look for Silver Eagles under 30. You might be able to find them one or two somewhere. Um, through the Road Ruta, the the deal we struck with Perpetual Assets, you can still buy them, but they're over 30 bucks now. Um, so that was it. Um, now we should see, we should know within the next few days, because they're allowing this to happen, you notice it was the Wednesday after the close of the COT, the only person, the only entity on the planet that doesn't see how silver is rigged is the, well, there's there's three, theoretically. The CME itself is a self-regulating entity, means it's supposed to regulate itself. You can't, I mean, really, that's just a, a way to get out of jail, basically. The next layer is the CFTC. The CFTC is the uh, regulator of commodities. They are just such a ridiculous joke. It's embarrassing to even call them a regulator. Um, I've been dealing with these schmoes for over 20 years. They just, it used to be they were really dumb. Now they're really corrupt. Uh, two of the five regulators, one comes from J.P. Morgan, the other comes from Citibank. J.P. Morgan is the largest uh, silver rigger. Citibank has the, third largest rigging position in silver in the in the um, OTC market, the over-the-counter market. So you cannot count on them to do anything as far as stopping the big guy, big guys. Uh, Rustin Benham, the guy who said, we had to tamp down the silver price, is obviously out on the game. And then there's two other schmoes that are kind of non-consequential. They, they've spent their life in regulations. I, I'd say they were probably on the dumb side. If they can't see that they're, the people they're working with are part of the, the rig job. That's your job, to find out who's rigging, who's assisting in the rig. Rustin Benham said, hey, we had to tamp down the silver price. Obviously, he's assisting. You have a Citibank and a J.P. Morgan <laughs> CFTC ex-employee. You know, once an employee, always an employee. Um, so everybody knows what's going on. But now is the interesting time. Now is when we call them to task if the commercial group shorts into the rise to $30, such that in, in a quantity, concentrated quantity, to stop the price rise, that's artificial price manipulation. And the CFTC have been told a zillion times how it works. Every time they just watch it happen, watch it happen, watch it happen. 
and that's illegal unless they're doing it for the U.S. government, then it's not illegal, which is an interesting twist. So I'll get to that in one second. But yes, we have crossed the 50-day, 100-day, 200-day moving average. I like this. I like this slow and steady wins the race. This reminds me of back when gold was trying to break $300 in the early 2000s. It, they were just blocking it from $300. No, the world would end if gold went over $300 and then it blew sky high. But this, the last few days of it was just, this is strong hands. Slow and steady, going to go up slow. And, we don't want to see the spikes. That's the, trying to scare people out. Slow and steady wins the race. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Blew through all the moving averages today. We'll see what happens on the follow-through. Okay, here's something that the Department of Justice, let's start with this announcement. The Department of Justice, former J.P. Morgan Precious Metals trader sentenced to prison. Defendants were J.P. Morgan's former head of global precious metals business and J.P. Morgan's former head of gold trading in New York. Two former precious metals traders at J.P. Morgan Chase were sentenced today for engaging in fraud, attempted price manipulation, and spoofing. That's three different things. As part of a market manipulation scheme that spanned over eight years. Mind you, those eight years from 2006 to 2014, I think it is. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, 2008 to 2016. During those years, a silver price and uh, CFTC investigation into the rigging of silver was happening. They were on the desk of J.P. Morgan from 2008 to 2016. The CFTC has never explained why they couldn't see the obvious. Bart Chilton did. One of the CFTC uh, commissioners said, hey, we caught J.P. Morgan offsides. They were completely out of position and rigging the market, and a political decision was made during the Obama administration. A political decision was made to let them keep going. Welcome to America. And here's what really pisses me off. They, they talked about uh, engaged in tens of thousands of uh, illegal trades, blah, 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 right? Here's what the <laughs> FBI said. As today's sentencing, sentencing demonstrates, the FBI and its partners, that's the CFTC, remain committed to investigating and bringing to justice anyone who attempts to manipulate our financial markets for their own selfish gain. In order to maintain economic security, investors in equity and commodity markets must have confidence that exchanges are operating in a transparent and equitable manner and that investments are free from manipulation and fraud. Today's outcome should serve as a reminder that the FBI remains highly focused on combating bad actors, conducting sophisticated fraud schemes, targeting the securities and commodities markets. Really? So, first of all, these guys commit tens of thousands of instances of this fraud in, in various different types of fraud, as they say, they committed, uh, where was it? Fraud, attempted price manipulation, and spoofing. Tens of thousands of times, they charged them for one count. They could charge them for two a, a year in prison for each one of those. You are not committed. And by the way, who told them to do it? Obviously, Blythe Masters, the head of Commodities for J.P. Morgan, who was the right-hand girl of Jamie Dimon. Once again, Jamie Dimon's people commit crimes and he walks free. What about the crimes he committed with Jeffrey Epstein? That's the good, that's the biggie. When that comes down, J.P. Morgan's done. J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the world, will be done. But Blythe Masters got off scot-free. Jamie Dimon, scot-free. These two schmoes get a year. You know what bonus they got in their last year? This is the amazing thing. This came out in the trial. Not the bonus, but the amount that the precious metals des made. The precious metals des that J.P. Morgan was making anywhere from 15 to $20 million every year from rigging during all those years and all the way going back to 2008. Between, and this came out in the trial. Between 15 and $20 million. In the last year... After the, they got shut down, the game got shut down, and they got fined $920 million. I think it was, yeah, it was 2020. $920 million. They got fined the largest fine in, in commodity history at the time. 
That desk made over a billion dollars. What? You say? 20 times? So if they book a billion dollar gain on the profits that the pre this was the precious metals desk, and let's just say the traders get 10 to 15%, sometimes 20%, That's a $200 million gain for the trader because he booked all the profits. Did they declare that anywhere? Did they hold it back? You know, they got to they gotta pay these guys for, you know, they're, they're basically taking a bullet for J.P. Morgan and the riggers, the real riggers. Here's one of the things that really irks me because I was saying it all the time as a joke. I said, oh, they must have clicked the mouse today. Remember that? I was saying, oh, they're clicking the mouse today. It was a joke. They don't click a mouse. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Down here at the bottom of this, for example, it says, Smith and Nowak used a technique to manipulate gold and silver prices from 2028 to 2016. The entire duration of the time which we said it showed gold manipulation was rampant, which, which were frequently mocked and ridiculed. Tunez testified that Smith was so fast at placing and canceling bogus orders that his colleagues would joke that he needed to put ice on his fingers to cool them down. That is a lie. They didn't use their fingers to click a mouse. These trades happened in milliseconds, were programmed in months before, by all their quants. They have like a massive staff of quants. The quants are like these math scientists that, that program these things long before the day. This was orchestrated. This was done by the most sophisticated traders. Most sophisticated traders in the world don't sit there and click a mouse. I hate to tell you. But that's what they, this, the way, the reason they keep saying that is they want to put pin it on these two guys along with the other guys who already pled guilty at J.P. Morgan and all the other banks that colluded with them, by the way. They're trying to pin it on individuals, not an overall deal where the bankers rigged the markets. You think the bankers aren't still rigging the markets? Why do you think J.P. Morgan is still today the custodian of SLV? 300, or was it, 500 million ounces right now? I haven't looked in a long time. And they're, we're supposed to trust them? And BlackRock, the owner of SLV? Oh, my God. The stuff that just came out on BlackRock? BlackRock decides to own AMARC and then part of AMARC and part of Sunshine Mint. The reason that they're not making Silver Eagles to meet demand is because Sunshine Mint couldn't supply the blanks. It just happened to be owned by BlackRock. Oh, by the way, BlackRock just happens to work for the Federal Reserve System. Yes, the Federal Reserve System couldn't figure out something to do with all the, all the crazy rigging, so they brought BlackRock in. Who is the head of gold and silver manipulation for BlackRock? A guy named Evie Hambro of the Hambro Banking family. Come on, people. This is not rocket science. And it has not stopped at all. Nothing has stopped. It was not just these two guys. They are not trying to stop silver and gold price manipulation. As a matter of fact, the U.S. Treasury has 100%, 100% legal authority to rig the, the markets for gold and silver. So when the DOJ says, where do they say it? Today demonstrates the FBI and its partners remain committed to investigating and bringing to Justin anyone who attempts to manipulate our financial markets. In order to mean maintain economic security, investors in equity and commodity markets must have confidence that exchanges are operated in a transparent, equitable manner that, and that investments are, quote, free from manipulation and fraud. Okay, then why haven't you repealed the Gold Act of 1934, which under Section 10, the Act established a stabilization fund of $2 billion under the control of the Treasury, these funds came from the profits of gold earned when it raised the price of gold. Oh, way to work for the gold. That's raised it from $20 to $35. And then what the exchange stabilization fund is working double time these days. 
Here it is. The Treasury could use the Exchange Stabilization Fund to buy or sell gold, foreign currencies, financial securities. So any COMEX contract is a financial security and other financial investments in order to control the dollar's value and to conduct open market operations without assistance or approval of the Federal Reserve. So the Treasury has the ability to rig the gold and silver markets. They can rig any markets in order to control the dollar's value. The Treasury could also use the ESF funds to transfer funds clandestinely to neutral nations or international allies. This tool proved useful during World War I, proved useful every single day since 1934, really proved useful during the years when Alan Greenspan invented the first computer trading programs to go along with the first electronic financial system he invented in the late 60s, early 70s, implemented by a guy named Arthur Burns, the head of the, tra- head of the Fed at the time and his friend Paul Volcker. It has been 100% rigged since 1934. So, back to this statement. It is important that investments are free from manipulation and fraud, dot, 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 unless it's the U.S. government, the U.S. Treasury implementing the manipulation of frog, then it's fine. But they're not going to tell you that because they're not honest. <sighs> so the Gold Act did a lot of other things. Uh, did you know gold was illegal to own in coin form from 1934 to 1974? Very interesting. And in bar form. There were so many things that just would blow your mind today. I mean, it'd be, if they tried to go back to that, it'd be so obvious. People are not as stupid as... They, it wasn't... They were, they were stupid. In many ways, they were very much smarter. No way would they fall for a fucking mask mandate and all that shit. They wouldn't fall for it in a second. But they did fall for things they couldn't understand, like how much gold was in the world. They didn't know. They had no idea. It's not like people talked about that. And if they did talk about it, it was made up, just like today. It was a made-up number. By Gold Fields Mineral Services. Thanks to Jeff Christian, we heard that. In the 1960s, they're the ones who tabulated how much gold was in the world. And they lied their asses off. Why? Because bankers have all the gold. They control all the gold. And they control the printing of uncalculable amounts of fiat money these days. Uh, people just you know judge gold by like its U.S. dollar value. Imagine all the other currencies out there that are being printed like it's going out of style. Not only the U.S. is printing money and not telling people about it. Every country in the world should be doing it now or they're idiots. Yes, the United States Exchange Stabilization Fund can destroy any country's currency with the click of a mouse, including Russia and China at the same time if they chose. One mouse click, gone. The Exchange Stabilization Fund has unlimited derivatives they play with. Unlimited. Let's keep that in mind. All right. Um, People hoping for the um, BRICS to say, yeah, we're going out of gold standard. Uh, Doesn't look very good so far. Um, Why would they? They're winning the game. If they went on to a gold standard, they would start losing the game because the United States supposedly has more gold. Why would they go on a gold standard when they're winning? It's like, Trump, I'm winning. Why change anything if you're winning? And, of course, it doesn't look like they will. They are. Putin came on and said, hey, the de-dollarization is irreversible. Putin had some good things. Of course, Putin wasn't allowed to go there because the United States would have shot him out of the sky probably. Yes, that's the country we are now. It's just so embarrassing. Um, So Putin said uh, the dollar's receding global centrality is objective and irreversible, an objective and irreversible process. I'm not so sure it's objective. I think there are people pulling strings behind the scenes. It's not just a normal thing. Um... 
He said the Russian leader claimed that five BRICS members, Russia, China, India, Brazil, and South Africa, are becoming the new world economic leaders, adding their cumulative share of global GDP has reached 26%. He noted that if measured by purchasing power parity, BRICS has already surpassed the group of seven leading eight nations accounting for 31% of the global economy compared to 30% for the G7. Absolutely, the BRICS are kicking ass because they're still playing in the old monetary system. And that old monetary system is the one that the U.S. can shut down with a click of a mouse. This is a real click of a mouse, not a J.P. Morgan trading program. This is literally, it's programmed in, the click of the mouse, the in-game is programmed in. Everything takes place after that. It's not just the mouse click. The mouse click says execute the program that was probably written back when computers were first introduced. You do know that when Greenspan got into power as the head of the Fed, he was a huge gold bug before that. Within two months of him getting into power, there was an electronic collapse of the stock market called Black Monday in 1987. That's Alan Greenspan clicking the mouse. One click. In 2011... September 11th, 2000, sorry, 2008, September 11th, 2008, one click of a mouse, half a, tr half a trillion dollars left the money market funds with a click of a mouse. That's how much power these guys have. And ultimately, the U.S. will use that power to return to a gold and silver standard, I believe. I think the good guys control that. So we will see. Um, then again, who knows? Trump confirms Thursday's surrender in Georgia case over 2020 election, former President Donald Trump confirmed Monday that he will be surrendering to authorities. And this is just, I mean, obviously it's for show. Obviously it's to, to, to wake people up at how stupid, how stupid they are for falling for all this bullshit. It's a shocking amount of bullshit. But um, yeah, talk about Trump rallying his base. Take it, go ahead, try Try to take a, a mugshot of him. Trump would use that as his, you know, his campaign picture. <laughs> what do you want America to be? A, a country that throws political opposition in jail for the most ridiculous reasons in the history of the world? No. It's going to be interesting. All right, that's what I got. Um, yeah, crazy time. Again, the... Silver under 30 program with perpetual assets is over, but they'll still sell you silver. Uh, I think silver, if it's not shorted by the banks, will run to $30. If it breaks $30 fairly easy, it'll run right to 50 When it breaks 50 I, I do expect quite a bit of resistance at 50 but it's gone. Forget about it. Um, then we'll finally find the true price of silver. The comics will probably be shut down, so we'll have to do it at our local coin shop or something so it's getting a little silly but you're in the right place at the right time this is bix i'll talk to you later